Hey everyone, how's it going out there? And today on Retro Devo, we're going to not be reviewing a specific game, but rather I felt because the NX is going to be coming out this year, the Nintendo NX, which I can't wait for, I'm really hyped to see what this thing is. Um, we're instead going to be debunking an old myth that has sprung up, which is, why isn't Nintendo hardware powerful? Well, that's an old myth, I hate to admit, because the truth is, other than once in their history, Nintendo has always been the more powerful, or one of the more powerful. It's true. You want to see what I mean? I'll show you what I mean. Let's take a look. Okay, so here we are. And it all started with this thing. This is where all modern gaming systems owe themselves to. The original good old NES. And yes, this is an original NES from back in the day. Sadly, mine does not work right now, but I'm planning on getting it fixed. But that's not what we're here to talk about. What we're here to talk about is the fact that Nintendo, whenever they came out with their systems, always had the most powerful hardware on the market, except once. And the NES is no exception, because its direct competitors were the Atari 7800 and the Sega Master System. And clearly the NES was superior. Now the NES has so many great games that are fun to collect and play. Like Blaster Master, Metroid, The original first two Legend of Zelda games. The first six Mega Man games, even though I only have Mega Man 2, which is a shame. And I'll tell you why in a few minutes. And of course, the original Super Mario Brothers that came with the systems. Though NES games are really fun to collect. Sadly, there's a downfall. And that is... Sadly, they're getting harder to find, but also more expensive to buy. And one Thing that pisses me off a lot is people who go to places like Goodwill they buy all the games for cheap and then resell them for outrageous prices I, I can't tell you how much I dislike resellers like here's a Super Nintendo game I got from a reseller which he probably got at like, you know, good something like Goodwill or something like that for at most $10. You know how much I paid? Almost 70. So, if you're going to get into um uh, retro systems, be careful of resellers. It's it's a lot of fun to collect for them, but you will pay the price. Now, Sega, in response, came out with the Sega Genesis, which, you know, was a 16-bit console, so that, to lo prevent losing customers, Nintendo decided to put out their own 16-bit system, and so they eventually released 
the Super Nintendo. And yes, the Super Nintendo is actually more powerful than the Sega Genesis, even though they're both 16-bit consoles. However, if you want either a Sega Genesis or a Super Nintendo, I would actually say go with both, because they're both really great consoles. Mine, sadly, right now is not working, but again, I'm going to have it fixed. My Sega Genesis, however, is working. So I don't know what happened, but Nintendo, you need that's one thing you do need to learn from Sega, is how to make your consoles last. Shame on you, Nintendo. But anyways, the Super Nintendo had a lot of great games. And so did the Sega Genesis. It had such games as... Super Castlevania 4. Turtles in Time. I'd really get in trouble if I didn't mention this one. Contra 3, The Alien Wars. The Super Star Wars Trilogy. And of course, the original Super Mario Kart. Yes. The Super Nintendo is where that fun series began, not the N64. These are only a few of the awesome titles available on this awesome system. The Genesis had great games like Rocket Knight Adventures, Vector Man, and of course, needless to say, Sonic the Hedgehog. But we're not here to talk about Sega. We're here to talk about Nintendo. Now, Sega eventually went on to release two peripherals for the Sega Genesis to try to keep it alive and going. They released the Sega CD, and when the PlayStation was released, they eventually released the Sega 32X as well as the Sega Saturn. And Nintendo knew that if they wanted to stay on top, they needed to put out a new console. And so eventually, Nintendo brought out the Nintendo 64. And yes, the, there are plenty of people who will deny it, but the N64 is more powerful than the original PlayStation. It's much more powerful. In fact, it even has smoother looking graphics. Even though it was a bit cartridge based video game console and that ticked a lot of companies off, but yes, it did have smoother game looking games as well as gameplay. And it had a massive lifespan all the way up until, let's think, 2000? Yeah, it was a great system. Yeah, and it even had games that changed the world of gaming. One in particular. This one. Super Mario 64. Mario games, and games in particular, have never been the same ever since this game came out. Now, of course, it was Nintendo's first 3D system, and that meant a lot of their titles had to adapt, because they had mostly been in 2D. And there's a lot of great titles for the N64, but there's also a lot of mediocre ones and bad ones, so you really gotta do your research if you wanna collect for the N64, because you gotta be careful. Some of the ones that adapted well are like the Legend of Zelda games. These two are great. Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, and Majora's Mask. I highly recommend these. They can be a bit tricky to find though, so be careful. They demand prices. Especially the gold carts. Especially in Ocarina of Time. Because, um, 
In the gray cart, Ganon's bl blood at the end is green to make it less violent, which I don't know what Nintendo was thinking. Back in the day, they were all about censoring. But in this version, the gold cart, his blood is red. So find the gold if you can. It's cool. And of course, Super Mario Kart 64. One of the greatest N64 games by a long shot. And there's also some great exclusives to the N64. In particular, if I didn't mention these, GoldenEye 007 and Perfect Dark, which basically came out at the end of its life. Now, other great franchises that we enjoyed in the past on other Nintendo consoles did not adapt well on the N64, and this is why you gotta be careful. You can't base it off of strictly that this is a great franchise. You gotta do your research and find out if it's actually a good game. Like, Mega Man 64 is a good game, but it was also on the PlayStation as Mega Man Legends. And the N64 version is actually the smoother game, but it's pricey because it's somewhat rare. It's, as you can see, I had to buy it for $37, and again, damn resellers. But some of, some of the games, franchises that did not adapt well into 3D on the N64 were such games as Doom and most notoriously Castlevania. These games are, like this one, it looks good other than it's way too dark. It's, it's thank God there's a map in it because otherwise you'd never find your way around. But Castlevania, it should have adapted really well into 3D, but it just didn't. And that's really, really sad because it, it was a great franchise, but its entry into 3D was a rough one. So yeah, I would skip on this one unless you really, really want to see what 3D was like in its beginning days. Or if you're just a die-hard Castlevania f fan. So, but then, something happened. The Sega Dreamcast came out. And that blew a lot of people's minds. And then, the PlayStation 2 came out. So, Nintendo, naturally, decided to do something. So they decided... To release this bad boy. The Nintendo GameCube. And the Nintendo GameCube is more powerful than the PS2. However, it is not more powerful than the Microsoft Xbox. And I believe the GameCube was released before the Xbox. I'm not certain. If I'm wrong, please forgive me, but I believe it was. Now, one of the great things about the Nintendo GameCube is that they're not really in demand anymore. Nobody really wants them, so you can pick one up, literally, for next to dirt cheap for a console. So I highly recommend you get a GameCube. They're so underrated, and there's just so many great games for it. Some of the games you should try to hunt down for it. I don't have a huge collection, but I can recommend some. Like Mario Kart Double Dash. Great game. Possibly one of my favorites for the Mario Kart series. Resident Evil 4. And this, originally when it came out, was a GameCube exclusive. Even though eventually it came to the PS2, it was originally a GameCube exclusive. Metroid Prime is a great game. 
but not my favorite in the Metroid series. And if you want to know more about why and about my opinions on the Metroid series, you can go watch the very first episode of Retro Devo, where I discussed Other M, as well as the whole Metroid series. And then, what? Wind Waker, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. This is one of the reasons to pick up a GameCube. Because this is an excellent Legend of Zelda game. It is so underrated. You should go find it, pick it up. And, of course, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Yes, I know this is coming out for the Wii U soon in an HD remake, just like there was an HD remake of Wind Waker. But, and I'll, I know a lot of you think that this was a launch title for the Nintendo Wii, but actually the Wii was just a port of The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess for the GameCube, which was actually their last game for the GameCube. It was a goodbye to the GameCube because it launched the same time as the Wii version. So, a lot of great games were released for the GameCube. It's a very fun system to collect for. Now, also, eventually, uh, it, the GameCube did not sell well. And eventually, you know, out came the PS3 and the Xbox 360. And so Nintendo decided to take a risk this time. This is the one time they did not have the most powerful hardware. They released the original Wii. But it paid off for them because of all the kiddie style and family friendly games. They, will, they were willing to take that risk. That is the one time they did not have the most powerful hardware. Now, as I said, there were a lot of family-friendly and kid games, but I will have you know that even though they gave off that impression, the Wii was not a kiddie console by any means. There were games that you do not want children to play on the Wii. And I'm going to give you some good examples of games that, you know, were on the Wii, but they're great to have, but they're definitely not kid games. Like House of the Dead 2 and 3. This is a great game. Yes, it's like, it's a port of two older games, but... <sighs> It's great because of the sensor bars ability on the Wii. You could get this thing. As I've said in my review of Chicken Shoot and Chicken Blaster, you could put the Wiimote in this thing called the Perfect Shot, and if it was required, you could use the nunchuck, attach the bottom, and you could use it like a light gun, which House of the Dead requires. Now, there was also House of the Dead Overkill. And this one you definitely don't want your kids to play because it is full of bad language. So it's a very adult game, so by no means is the Wii specifically for kids. And then, GoldenEye 007. The remake. Now, a lot of people hate this game, and I don't know why. It could be because Daniel Craig is in it, and it's a lot like Call of Duty, but if you think about it, Call of Duty is just a lot like the original GoldenEye, so that's a really inaccurate argument to say that it's too much like Call of Duty. You should pick this one up. Metroid Other M came towards the end of the Wii's lifespan, and I'm not going to say too much about this game because I have a full review of it. It was my first Retro Devo episode, so if you want to know more about Other M, go watch it. 
This one's hard to find. Metroid Prime Trilogy has all three main Metroid Prime games all reworked in the Wii's version of HD. Um, but it's very hard to find. It's It was released in limited amounts, but pick it up if you find it. And last but not least, the reason to have a Wii, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Now, a lot of people criticized this game when it came out because of the way that you controlled and because of the way it looked, but I'll tell you, this is like one of my favorite Zelda games. And I thought the controls, I've beaten it, and I think the controls are amazing. You control him with the nunchuck, but the only thing that you do with the Wiimote, really, is you use the sword and your items. It's really a great game. So, as you can see, with all these games, except for Legend of Zelda, possibly, the Wii was not specifically a kiddie console at all. So, don't let someone tell you that because you have a Wii, you're, you know, into kitty games. Now, moving on from the Wii, the Wii U. Now, I, first and foremost, the Wii U is its own system. It is not a add-on tablet for the original Wii, and you cannot play Wii U games on the original Wii. It's its own unique system. Now, there's a lot of great games for the Wii U, but sadly, it's not selling well, and as excited as I am for the Nintendo NX to come out, I'm also very sad to see the Wii U go. It's, it's been so short-lived, but and it's a great, great system. And the sad thing is that I think the Wii U is destined to be a collector's system because the games are already hard to find and they're just going to get even harder to find as soon as it's, um, you know, uh, discontinued. So how about some games? Well, there's plenty of great games for the Wii U and the reason you should pick up a Wii U. I'll tell you some of these games. Splatoon. This is one of the reasons to pick up a Wii U. It is not available on any other platform. You need to pick this game up. It's basically a kid-friendly shooter, if you can imagine such a thing. It's a turf war where you squirt ink. It's really, really fun. Pick it up. Sonic Lost World, and no, this is totally different from Sonic Boom, which is a horrible game, and you know I'm not a big fan of 3D Sonic games, and you can watch my special if you want to see more about that, but Sonic Lost World I did not include because this is actually a really great game. It's like Super Mario Galaxy, but with Sonic. It's really good should pick it up. Guitar Hero Live. I'm not going to say much about this other than that this is the version if you want to play Guitar Hero Live that you should pick up simply because you don't have to pay for the online features. I reviewed this in my second Retro Devo episode. If you want to know more about this, go watch that episode. Mario Kart 8. Another reason to buy Wii U. It is awesome. The first Mario Kart in full HD, you should pick this up. It's really, really fun. Super Mario 3D World. Great game. Not much to say. Just great game. Pick it up. Ah, the real reason to buy a Wii U. Super Mario Maker. This game is is the definition of fun. This is every Mario fan's 
dream come true. You make your own levels and you post them online and other people can play them. You should pick this game up. And of course, Super Smash Brothers for Wii U. This, I believe, is the best version of Super Smash out there. You should really pick it up, and if you can find one, you should get the GameCube adapter, because this is compatible with GameCube controllers, if you can find a GameCube adapter. And, last but not least, a great game that's on other systems, Arkham City Armored Edition. Now, the reason to get this game, unless you have the uh, version on the PS3 that came with all the downloadable content is because this version not only makes use of the Wii U gamepad but also this version comes with all the downloadable contact contents already on the disc so you should pick this up so there's a lot of reasons to buy a Wii U. It is not the same as an original Wii, and I'm very sad to be seeing it go. And I cannot wait for Star Fox and Legend of Zelda Wii U and Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. I look forward to those games, but I'm very sad to see the Wii U cut so short. But I am very excited about Codename NX. But what people don't realize is that the Wii U was more the most powerful console when it came out because the PS4 and the Xbox One came out later a whole year later and the Wii U is more powerful than the PS3 or the Xbox 360 so for one year Nintendo did have the most powerful console on the market so that's what I've got to say so yeah you see Starting right from the beginning with the NES and all the way up to the GameCube, which I know was the Xbox was more powerful, but it was more powerful than the PS2. Despite the fact that it used small discs, it was still a more powerful machine. And the Wii U, you can't say that it's the less powerful machine. I mean, yes it is, but you gotta remember it was out a whole year before the PS4 and the Xbox One. So for a whole year, Nintendo had the most powerful system still on the market because it's more powerful than the PS3 and the 360. So, come on guys. Nintendo, whenever they come out with a system, has always or nearly always had the more powerful system on the market. So, the idea that they're just a kitty console is a bunch of baloney. So, we'll see you next time. And Nintendo fans, stand up for Nintendo. Tell them the truth. Nintendo is awesome. Go buy a Nintendo. See you soon.